Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tidbits Art History. My name is Christina Koopman, and as always, thanks for joining me. Pinpointing the beginning of a single art movement is a little bit like identifying the first raindrop in a storm. It starts slowly, and then all of a sudden you look around and it's completely downpouring. How do you identify the first person to create abstract art? Well, it starts with defining what abstract art is. Does it mean there's no subject matter? Does it mean that it doesn't look like a photograph? Does it mean, you can tell there are a lot of questions to be answered before you can even decide what a category is. But for many years, the assumed creator of abstract art as we know it in the Western world was Russian artist Wassily Kandinsky. However, recent research now hails an eccentric witchy recluse named Hilma Eof Klint as the true inventor of abstract painting. Eof Klint began experimenting with abstract symbolic paintings in 1906, years before similar innovations from more widely credited artists like Kandinsky and Mondrian. Her route to abstraction was not entirely through the avant-garde world and art community, but instead through the spiritual and supernatural world. This sounds strange today, but it was much more in vogue to be in touch with your spiritual side in the early 1900s. Her work was forgotten for decades, in part due to specifications in her will that prevented it from being exhibited, as she believed society was not yet ready to understand her vision. That view may have been a prescient one, since Eof Klint's work has only become widely popular in recent years. Her show at the Guggenheim became an unexpected blockbuster when in 2018 and 2019, it attracted a record for the institution, attracting 600,000 visitors during its run. It's a strange phenomenon that Eof Klint's work will influence a contemporary generation more than her own peers. She placed a 20 year embargo on exhibiting her work following her death, not in order to be secretive as Guggenheim curator, Tracy Boschkoff initially assumed but as, quote, a gesture of controlling and trying to determine the audience of her work, end quote. Which, to Bashkov, really reiterates her agency as an artist. She's taking back control even from beyond the grave. Eof Klint was, quote, grappling with the works she was committed to, wanting them to be received in a safe space by a spiritually ready audience, end quote. Are we ready now for what Eof Klint had to say? Let's take a deeper look. Hilma Eof Klint, born 1862, was a Swedish artist and mystic whose paintings were considered among the first abstract works known in Western art history. A considerable body of her work predates the first purely abstract compositions by Kandinsky and Mondrian. As an artist, she is well known for her large-scale abstract paintings and botanical drawings. Her works combined many aspects of scientific illustration, geometry, and color theory. Like most abstract artists at the time, many of her works were inspired by spiritism and theosophy. Throughout her lifetime, women in many fields turned to spiritualism as a way to overcome gender conventions, and in the beginning of 1896, Eof Klimt formed a group, De Femme, or The Five, and held spiritual meetings and seances. Eof Klimt's landscape and portraiture work were rarely exhibited. She never shared her abstract work to her contemporaries and wanted them hidden from the world until society was ready for it. She died in the fall of 1944, leaving behind 1,300 non-figurative works that have never been shown. The artist specified in her will that the work be kept secret for at least 20 years after her death and never be split up. In 2019, the Guggenheim held a survey of the artist's work titled Hilma Eof Klint, Paintings of the Future. The following is an excerpt from the article How the Swedish Mystic Hilma Eof Klint Invented Abstract Art from Julia Fiore in artsy.net. Eof Klint was born outside of Stockholm in 1862 to an upper-middle-class family. After the death of her younger sister, an 18-year-old Eof Klint turned to esoteric spiritual movements like theosophy, which attempted to reconcile what are usually seen as diametrically opposed belief systems. Science and religion reinforced, instead of contradicting, each other. 
she regularly began to host seances to communicate with the dead. Eof Clint may have pursued an interest in the occult, but meanwhile she attended the traditional Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Stockholm. Her portraits and landscapes from this period are technically proficient, but largely unremarkable, consistent with the conventional naturalistic style popular in the day. Still, she was successful and talented enough to graduate from the academy with honors, and the school provided her with a shared studio right in the heart of the city's art scene. The building also housed a salon, which in 1894 exhibited works by up-and-coming artist Edvard Munch, a show she most likely would have seen. It's not the avant-garde that inspired the shift in Eof Klint's work to spiritually derived abstraction. During this time, the artist became increasingly involved with a local spiritualist group and soon initiated her own independent circle with four female friends. They called themselves De Femme, or The Five. At weekly meetings, this coven prayed, meditated, and held seances to commune with spiritual guides. While this might conjure for contemporary readers a gaggle of girls sitting eagerly around a Ouija board, curator Tracy Boshkoff urges us to see these rituals as a product of their time. Eof Klint's spiritual practice wasn't as unusual as it sounds to us today, she explained. It was a much more popular and accepted trend. Spiritualist movements were in vogue in the U.S. and Europe at the turn of the century, especially among literary and artistic circles including the artists generally considered to be the forerunners of abstraction, such as Wassily Kandinsky and Piet Mondrian. At the tail end of the 19th century, a string of scientific developments were radically altering prevailing ideas about the world. Darwin's evolutionary theories, while not yet entirely accepted in academic circles, matriculated into almost every sphere of popular culture. The discovery of subatomic particles, Radioactivity and the X-ray confirmed for spiritualists that there was, in fact, a godly, invisible realm of existence. There was one other compelling reason for Eof Clint to seek out these groups. While mainstream art circles were wary of female talent and participation, movements like theosophy and spiritualism were very heavily run by women. These were areas of society where women were at the fore as leaders. Theosophy was founded by a woman, and both movements supported women's suffrage. Navigating between the artistic world and the spiritual world, Eof Klint shaped her life so that she could get the most support she could out of the systems around her. De Femme were apparently successful in making contact with the spirit guides, who, over the years, identified themselves as Amalil, Ananda, Clemens, Esther, Georges, and Gregor. The women documented their experiences with these so-called high masters in notebooks, collaborating with automatic drawings filled with biomorphic forms inspired by their visions. Soon enough, in 1904, Georges and Ananda tasked the women with a special mission that would ultimately transform the trajectory and very purpose of Eof Clint's life, to convey the spiritual world through painting, and to design a temple to house the resulting works. The other members of the group declined the charge, cautioning that such a prolonged, intense engagement with the spirit realm could lead to madness. But on January 1, 1906, Eof Clint promised Amalil that she would undertake this great commission. She began her series The Paintings for the Temple in 1906, and even with several periods of rest, as mandated by the spirit guides, by 1908 she had completed the first 111 pieces in a monumental cycle that would come to encompass 193 works on canvas and paper by 1915. The early paintings for the temple were guided, as Eof Klint understood, by instructions transmitted from the spiritual guides. Whereas Kandinsky's brand of spiritual abstraction looked inward to the artist's own unconscious muse, Eof Klint literally felt that astral spirits were working through her. But as she noted in her journals, quote, it was not the case that I was to blindly obey the high lords of the mysteries, but that I was to imagine that they were always standing by my side, end quote. Afklint largely kept the paintings for the temple to herself, and they only recently came to the public eye. She took a four-year break from the series to care for her ailing mother, when she returned to the project in 1912, she no longer received her subject matter from a high master. Instead, her compositions followed her own inner visions. 
In the series The Tree of Knowledge, completed between 1913 and 1915, this crucial shift is reflected. The tree's natural subject matter, curved lines, and ornate details suggest a stylistic connection to the then-popular Art Nouveau aesthetic, yet they maintain the artist's core beliefs in the search for the divine singularity, a basic unity lost at the moment of the world's creation. Over the course of her life, Av Klint exhibited her paintings only a few times, usually at spiritualist gatherings and conferences. One exhibition, however, suggests a deeply missed connection that could have changed the course of art history. Some of her figurative paintings were exhibited in the 1914 Baltic exhibition in Malmo alongside abstract works by none other than Kandinsky, the Russian artist who for the last hundred years or so has been credited as the inventor of abstract art. Kandinsky also dabbled in spiritualism, his influential 1911 manifesto on the spiritual in art is heavily influenced by such theories. The two seemed to circle around each other, though there's no evidence that they ever met. Kandinsky and the other avant-garde pioneers of non-objective art never knew that a woman artist had beaten them to the punch, inventing a spiritually-based abstraction almost a decade before them. Before her death in 1944, Eof Klint proposed a design for her own temple to house her life's work, a three-level conical structure that bears an eerie resemblance to the coiled shell of what is today the Guggenheim Museum in New York. Eof Klint envisioned her paintings inhabiting such a spiraled environment. Visitors would embark on a winding spiritual journey toward the temple's inner sanctum, which would culminate with her monumental altarpiece paintings an examination of the ever-changing cosmos, which she called the summary of the series so far. In many ways, the Guggenheim retrospective, put on in 2018 and 2019, fulfills the artist's long-buried dream. Eof Klint considered abstract art to be the, quote, spiritual precursor of a utopian social harmony, a world of tomorrow, end quote. So, is the world finally ready for what Hilma Eof Klint had to say? Ooh.